you're currently contracted to NWA. Um, where can we expect to see you pop up uh, over the coming I, I want to say I'm contracted with them, but I am in agreement with uh, <laughs> NWA. Um, so whenever they call, whenever they call me, because my schedule, because I'm also still an independent contractor, so my, uh, so when they have shows, if I don't have a, sh- you know, they got to make sure that my my dates don't conflict with their schedule. Mm. So whenever they call and I my dates are available, because they usually want you for the whole week, you can't miss a you can't miss a day. So that's fair. I think the last time yeah. I I had watched uh, an, an NWA match with you, I think you were teaming with De Niro. Yeah, and he's now in uh, Impact. Is he back in Impact? Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> I well, I mean that that means there's a clear path for you now. When are you gonna dethrone Tyrus? Man, we'll see, man. We'll see. I don't know if he wants that smoke yet. I think he wants to hold the title for a little bit longer because <laughs> you know if he, if me and him go at it, you know, you might have to, you know. <laughs> I think I think you'll find the internet will blow up if you take that title off of him. <laughs> yes, uh, I'll be a big baby face. <laughs> absolutely. Welcome to Jobbed Out, the wrestling editorial that reminds you that fish may be good for you and water may be good for you, but please be careful when you're chugging them together. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. While I was putting together my episode on the WWE MTV Silent Library crossover, I had the opportunity to sit down and chat with one of its participants, former WWE superstar and one half of Crime Time, JTG. During our half-hour chat, not only did we talk about his time on the show, but also his start as a pro wrestler, the state of tag team wrestling as a whole, the importance of wrestling stars branching out to the mainstream, and the legacy of his friend and tag partner, the late, great Shad Gaspard. Without further ado, here's my chat with JTG. I hope you enjoy. Today's guest is uh, bringing the hood back to you and me. Uh, He's just too good. JTG, how you doing today? I am doing good. JTG now evolved to Jay the God. Jay the God, I like it. Yeah. Now, I feel like the WWE missed the boat not actually doing the just too good part. I mean, I know they don't like to, you know, have two or three people with the same names. They had a two hottie, and uh, <laughs> when when uh, ICP was around, they had a two dope, but they couldn't do a too good. Nah, let's leave it, leave it at JTG because it was a mystery for a long time with the fans, and I, I, I liked it that way. Like, what did JTG stand for? What did yeah, I just? I was like, I don't get to figure it out. I just left it blank. <laughs> <laughs> Very CM Punk of you. I like that. Of course, you know you and and Shad Gaspard. You were together uh, as Crime Time. Uh, you were a tag team forever, like from the start. What were your your earliest memories when it came to wrestling? What made you get into pro wrestling? Uh, shoot, it starts from the early age of two. My mom was a big wrestling fan, and she would take me and my uh, older sister to Madison Square Garden every month because WWF ran every month. So I remember going to Madison Square Garden and sitting in the nosebleeds every month and um, getting a glimpse of Hulk Hogan. Um, I remember us, uh, early memories of trying to, uh, from the nosebleeds, trying to rush down to see if, we, if there were like three open seats on the floor. You know, every every now and then we'll get lucky and I'll probably have to sit on my mom's lap, but the security would be like, hey, let me see a ticket and we have to go back. But yeah, I remember those uh, train rides to MSG from Brooklyn. Um, from two years old and my mom just was always, always a big fan so she always encouraged me so i had the right environment <laughs> there you go yeah you had a lot of encouragement in that sense was uh was hulk hogan the one or was there somebody that made you just go i want to do this forever i think i think as, as you as you get older you go through stages like for me as a as a as a toddler it was hulk hogan he did it for me and then i was as i was becoming like I think around six, seven, eight, around seven or eight, it was uh, Bro Hart. And nice. Bro Hart, I, I was a Bro Hart, uh, diehard Bro Hart fan for a long time. And then The Rock came along, then you had your Jeff Hardys and your RVDs, you know, Chris Benoit's Jericho. But I think my foundation is, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, is uh, Bro Hart. <laughs> <It's Bro Hart. laughs> You're not the first New Yorker to tell me that. Uh, well, I guess the other guy was, you know, part New York, part Connecticut, but just incredible. His start was the Hearts. He, yeah. and uh, for him, you know, he just saw a promo for uh, Bruce Hart's uh, training school in a magazine, and he decided to head north. 
You wow. decided you decided to go. Uh, at least you know the the documented history of it is just you <laughs> appeared in Ohio Valley. But <laughs> did did you like was OVW your actual first start, or did you you know pick up a school before then and kind of move into? Yeah. It? I picked I picked up a school before OVW. I was there for like maybe six months. It was, I, I went there right after high school. Um, I was still seventeen when I graduated high school, so I had to wait till December to get into the ring when I turned 18. And that was in um, in uh, North Carolina. I'm trying to remember the exact city. It wasn't Charlotte. I lived in Charlotte, but it was about 45 minutes or an hour away. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, I moved to Charlotte. I had family there and I went to, I, I was trained there for about six months. You know, the trainer was kind of iffy. You know, he wasn't, you know, he sometimes just dropped me off at the ring and the other guys who were at the ring were kind of like showing me how to hit the rope and like, where your train at? I was like, well, he just dropped me off. Like, you paid him? I'm like, yeah, he's supposed to be here. And it was just a lot of confusion. I was like, I need, I'm taking this serious. And uh, I kept hearing about OVW because I would go to the, uh, to the independent shows in the area just to, you know, show my face and get acquainted with the, uh, with the business. And I kept hearing OVW, OVW, did my research and I just, I said, I'm moving back to New York, and I'm going to go to OBW from New York. <laughs> it's a good choice, and uh, you knew and you came in, you know, in the mid 2000s when they were just on fire. You know, they were oh. absolutely, and you know, they were when I went producing. on their website, all those, all those, um, <clears throat> the alumni was just crazy. You know, they had Shelton Benjamin, Brock Lesnar, John Cena was just, you know, making a name for himself. Randy Orton, they're like Batista. Like the, the roster was crazy. Like I need to be on that alumni list and I made it. <laughs> you did. When it comes to, you know, who your trainer is, who your your mentor was, do you look at Nick Dinsmore, Danny Davis route? Like, would you consider them? I would definitely say that Rip Rogers was definitely a mentor. Rip Rogers. He was, he was yeah, he was more hands-on with me, training with him, and he took more of a, more of a liking. While you're down there, uh, of course, you, you got teamed up with Shad. You went through a few names. Personally, I think mm-hmm. the neighborhood was just, wow, chef's kiss. Beautiful name. Um, but yeah, with the, the two of you, you, you formed Crime Time. You made it to WWE main roster pretty quick. I know you had some, I think, dark matches and then went back down to OVW and then came back up. I mean, the, the, the chemistry there, just phenomenal. The charisma was there. The fans loved you. Of course, you know. You also, you know, sold wrestlers' gear and, and swag as as part of the show, which you know, who doesn't like, who doesn't like stuff? It's a good way to get over. You were let go. You were brought back in, and it was like you hadn't missed a beat. Again, the fans loved it. Uh, as soon as you heard "Yo, yo, yo, yo," everybody just popped, which was fantastic. But then, for some reason, in in 2010, WWE's like, you know what? We're splitting them up. And I don't quite know why. I Usually, you know, when they do that, they have a plan for somebody to be elevated. You, yeah. But for some reason, they just didn't really do that with either of you. You were the one that they kept on the main roster. Uh-huh. But how were they conveying this message to you? What What did they tell you was going to go on? So after, so at that time and moment, they didn't give a, uh, they didn't give a shit about the tag teams. And they made it pretty obvious. <laughs> um, and after WrestleMania, when we were in the, we weren't in the tag team match. I believe who who was the champions at the time? Morrison and R Truth. Yeah. You know they, they like they put they put together two single stars. You know to be to be to be the champion. It was kind of like a spit in our faces. Like you have two, you have a legitimate tag team right here. Like we we, could, we, we like the writing was on the wall. They didn't yeah. care they, about. They broke team. you up against those two. Actually, if exactly. I remember, you didn't you didn't even tag it into the match. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it was kind of our, our decision. Our decision. Well, it wasn't our decision. We kind of agreed with it. It was like, yeah, the boss is thinking about you know splitting you guys up. What do you guys think about that? It was like, yeah, okay, cool. You know, you guys are not really doing anything with the tag team division. Uh, let's see what, how we do singles. And um, the plan. They asked us who um, who wanted to go heel or babyface. You know, me and Shad talked about it, and he wanted to do. Um, he said he'll be the he, he'll be the heel. You be the underdog, you know, tell a better story. And we kind of had some storylines going on. We, we, we passed it to the writers, but they didn't n- They didn't use any of it. <laughs> what a shame, man. And then there was a split after that. Uh, they put us on two different rosters. Then we wind up back on the same roster. It was just, they had no idea what they were doing. There was no direction. So it, it was hard for even the talent to even uh, help with ideas. If We didn't even know what roster we were going to be on, what brand we were going to be on. Again, that's a shame. Coming from a fan who genuinely liked watching the both of you, 
You know, it's frustrating when now all of a sudden we're seeing neither of you. Uh, but yeah. you did uh, you did get to have an interesting little uh, run uh, with NXT when they were trying to figure out what they were going to be. Uh, when they, you know, stop, they they hadn't stopped yet being the game show, but they started to be a little <laughs> bit more black and gold. They were doing yeah. stories that didn't necessarily involve the rookies. Yeah, uh, personally, loved it. Uh, I would. Watch I, had fun. <laughs> was... I, I had fun during those during those times because we were just given a a pass to just ha- just to be ourselves and be fun. <laughs> and and that's that's what I wanted to ask because you know I mean stuff that we would not see on Raw and SmackDown, you know, Johnny Curtis running around backstage with chloroform or yeah. <laughs> you and Kozlov having, you know, a gangsta off, you know, yeah. was, it, all the good old days. <laughs> was this a situation where you actually got to present your ideas? Did they just say, Hey, you know what? You guys got four minutes, go nuts. Something like that. You know, they present us with something, with some, with an idea or some bullet points and we just, just had fun with it. Because I don't think no, I don't think Vince or anybody was like anybody of real importance was really like really watching the show, dissecting it. So we got away with a lot. <laughs> so you know, it feels like that's the answer sometimes. Um, you know, some of the even when they they launched WWE Network and they did a couple like cartoons and comedy shows and that, and it's like, why'd that get pulled off the air? Vince found out about it. Oh yeah, pretty yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so one of the things that you did get to participate in. Um, this was a, a crossover deal. It was uh, actually with MTV. Uh, it was oh, yeah. uh, Silent Library, which, you know, it was a game show where they punished people more than they rewarded people. <laughs> uh, and and crossovers at this point weren't as common as they were in the 80s and 90s. You know, it seemed like every other week, you know, Family Feud would be like the women of GLOW versus yeah. the mid-card of WCW, and it's brought wrestlers out more into the mainstream media but in the 2000s and 2010s it just wasn't happening as much when you did get presented with this like how did it go down i had spoken with kaylin croft about this and he just said well we were assigned a media appearance uh were you guys yeah, picked yeah pretty much we saw it on our um we get we get travel every week and we saw um you want to? Uh, I think I was asked, like, do you want to do the uh, MTV Silent Library? I think I heard of it. He was like, yeah, it's on this day. You got to do it. Blah blah blah. I was like, yeah, I'm down. And it was after a um, live event. Uh, I remember me and Dolph. I think it was from Boston, and we they put us in a limo. We drove from um, <laughs> from Boston to New York in a limo. We stayed in Times Square, and um, they took care of us. We had, it, it, I had a great experience working with MTV. Well, until the shit, until the cameras rolled. <laughs> Yeah, the the production part, <laughs> <laughs> the stunt itself. But the thing, I was lucky. I was lucky because they had. To, I, I was. I didn't draw any. Um, what you call it? I didn't flip over any of the. Uh, I said the physical. The physical ones is what I I had noted because at least the one that aired for you was more of a gross you out kind of challenge. Yeah, because I, I could. They couldn't get me to flip over. Uh, the one to do the stunt to do the uh, what you call it, the stunt. Everybody else would draw. I was the I was um, I think the last one, but the way they cut it and put it on TV, they, they you know they mixed it in. But yeah, he's like, no, everybody else got a stunt, but you didn't get one. So if you notice, I only did one uh, did one that's, prank. That's an that easy was, payday. That was the I was... worst one. That was the worst one. I had to drink uh, fish water. Ah uh, yes, that, baby that was, fish that, mouth. That was, yeah, that was that was a legit fish. Very lucky that didn't end up becoming a nickname for you, because baby fish mouth. I mean, I let's face it, fans would chant that right now if they could. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that doesn't have a ring to it. I could see the merch. Maybe fish mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, they always note that there's there's challenges that, you know, didn't make it to air. Were you, like, just on a wicked, like, it's time to go to the casino after this streak? Like, you just weren't getting any challenges at all? I wasn't getting any challenges. That's what, yeah, that's not the word I was looking for. I wasn't getting anyone, and then um, they were like, they fixed it. They were like, all right, come on, we got to. And I'm like, all right, I'll pick this card. And then I flipped it over. Oh, I had to act surprised. Like, oh, it's mine. I got to do the, the the fish water, but I didn't know I was doing the fish water. You were but so I, confident on that one too. You man. pounded the fist. You you were gonna take this down, and then I don't know if you know lips touched I, lips or something. Yeah, because for some reason I thought it would have been kind of a. I didn't know it was gonna be real. I thought they would have docked it up a little bit because it's for TV. They would have have real talent drinking fish water, but yeah, they they did. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a seafood guy? I was a seafood guy. I, I, I was, I'm vegan now. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, I don't blame you after that. You know, yeah. baby tofu mouth, it probably would have been baby an tofu. easier challenge. You know? With all this lab meat going on, yeah, I had, I had to go vegan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, okay, so you got to sit out and watch a lot of challenges there. Uh, and especially watching, I was, at least what aired on TV, Chris Masters got beat up. Yeah, he did. Dolph too. Dolph got uh wasn't he the one who got like the um oh was it was it Masters? Yeah, I think it was Masters, like with with the us uh, who was uh, doing the slingshot. Dolph got the slingshot. Oh yeah, it was Dolph, yeah. Masters got, got the tin cans and it looks like you had a lot of fun. With the tin <laughs> cans just hitting them in the junk over and over. You were like piling them three at a time to hit them. Hard. He, did he have a um He had a tornado as well. I'm trying to think if he had some protection there. I think if he had a cup. I don't think he had a cup. I think there, he had a tuck. <laughs> there was a lot of there was a lot of you know close shots on his junk there, but it's, you know it's MTV. I don't know how much attention I was going to be paying to that. But yeah, I don't uh, think he had the budget for the cup. Yeah, I think he had a. And then with Dolph too, with the slicks. I remember because I shared a room with Dolph, mm-hmm. and he had a whole bunch of red. Uh, he had like welts on his skin. He was like, man, this shit is more real than our wrestling. I'm like. <laughs> Were there any any challenges that you watched uh, that were you like you were like you know what wish I got that one that would have been easy I could have smoked it. Um, I can't remember all the challenges at the moment. That was like so, like twelve years ago. Uh, <laughs> if you bring it to uh, bring some time, there were one there there were some that I knew that I was like man I could, I could definitely do it. But I can't think of it right now off the top of my head. The tornado one that Masters went through. I don't think anybody would have wanted to go through that. Whereas like the, 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 the cotton tornado with a bunch of debris that would be smacking you upside the head and you have to stand in that? <laughs> no, we definitely don't want to do that one. Uh, not the one that Dolph did, the, uh, the slingshot one. Um, which other one? The baby fish water? Would I, have to, I wouldn't do that again, no. I don't think I have the mental... I, I don't have the... I'm still not there yet. I think Trent was <laughs> the one that got fed by a giant bird. That one looked... Equally as disgusting. Yes, that bothered me for a while. That was very disturbing. Um, <laughs> did... uh, yeah. Ooh, dang, why you even put that image back in my head? <laughs> uh, I forgot all about it. I buried that. <laughs> Sorry, man. And I was going to ask you if you had a clue what it was. He did say that was dis- that that was disgusting. He was he he him he himself was disturbed by that. <laughs> that, that was uh, for for an ordinary person like that show. A lot more scarring than appearing on The Price Is Right. <laughs> you know. If you put Brian Kendrick on both, I think he'd prefer to just stick to Price is Right. Yes, yes. Did he, did he win that, by the way? I I remember he won the first prize. I don't think he won the whole episode. He didn't win the whole episode at all. Okay, damn it. <laughs> do you have a rough idea? Like, how many challenges do you guys... Like, was it, like, a, an eight-hour shoot? Like, how many did you guys do? I would I would say that it would last it about... Um... Let me see. About eight hours. We shot for we shot for a while. Then we had lunch. Uh, they had to explain the show. Yeah, they, it was, we were there for a while. It, just, it was just one day of shooting. But they made a full day of it. Yeah, they made it a full day. Yeah. It's it's cool, but it's terrifying, and I still feel bad for you guys. But obviously, I want to talk no, it, about it. It was <laughs> a great experience. No 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 regrets. Uh, and plus, especially for me, because I only had to do one one challenge. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's quite a good payday. You know, the the money to to pain ratio was definitely in your favor on that one. And then on top of that, we almost didn't get paid. Uh, I remember them like when we first got there, they they were saying that we had to donate the money. I mean, I'm all for for donating, but give me that you know that option. You know, it was mandatory <laughs> donate. It was like, wait, hold on now. <laughs> I might I think- want to do half. You know, to to the to the to the JTG Foundation and. The rest is whatever <laughs> you got going on, but you know. I think uh, uh, Croft told me in the end, you guys, you guys got the amount, and then WWE uh, cut a check. Yes, they cut the check for us. Did, did they tell you guys who they were donating it to? Um, to whoever WWE, whoever they wanted to. I don't know. Oh, it okay. probably was, it probably was the WWE. The charity was WWE. We don't know, but they, I know they they wanted the money. They let us know that, right? and then we had to be like, nah, hold on. And we actually, and then we were able to. Uh, get our checks made out to us <laughs> there you go it was like 730 bucks too that's that's pretty good was it 730? I can't remember. But yeah, I guess at least that's what they they said on air they put a little disclaimer on the end that said you know because there are extra challenges there are money that may not have uh you know been noted on the show uh, i can't remember <laughs> it's better than walking out there walking uh leaving there empty-handed jeez yeah 
Well, you were the only one who didn't have to buy nipple cream after that one, because that final challenge, you got to sit that one out, too. Ooh, man. I, yeah, I was, I was lucky that day. <laughs> <laughs> Just in general, with it, when it comes to, you know, crossovers like this, do you see a benefit to it? Was it, you know, just another day in the office for you guys? You know, hey, we get to do Uh, something different. Or do you see more interest in SmackDown, which you guys were all on at the time, uh, by going out and showing these other audiences who you are? I think it helps the the entire industry, not just WWE. When you see um, performers outside of their element, outside of the ring, I think it helps... um, uh, the brand it helps the industry by seeing you know wrestlers outside you know like, like back in the 80s when you saw wrestlers on Family Feud you know it made people like okay who is this guy he's an interesting character I, what channel does he come on oh he's on WCW oh, that's the Macho Man you know you'll turn you'll take a, a a non-wrestling fan and turn him into a fan because you saw them outside of you know right back in the they did that with the, you know, on MTV a lot. You saw the bushwhackers on on Family Matters. You know that was that was amazing, and it was great as a wrestling fan to see because um, your friend, your your friends and family who don't watch wrestling, like, see, they're cool. You should watch it with me. You know, so I, I think it, I think they should bring that back. They should do a lot more. Um, uh, what is the term called when you see the when you see like cameos and crossovers? Yes, yeah, crossovers and cameo. I think we should see, see a lot more of that. Yeah, lately it's been more towards. I mean, it's not reality TV as they like to express it, because you know, the definition's <laughs> changed. It's been singing shows lately. Uh, Chris Jericho, Alexa Bliss, they were both on The Masked Singer. I did a video about that recently. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's cool, too. Yeah. Yeah. So when are we going to see JTG drop the mic and do some, uh, do some uh, tunes? I, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> the Masked Singer? <laughs> Oh, I mean, dancing one, dancing with the stars? Yeah, I'm going to pass on both of those. I mean, Gronk did Masked Singer, and he can't sing. So, Who? Gronk. Who Rob Gronkowski? Oh, you did! Wow. Yeah. Oh, he was just awful. I'm never having him on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> are there are there any any you know shows out there any um, competitions where you're like you know what? I kind of hope they give me a call. I would like to do a ninja one. I never I never uh, uh, submitted, but that looked like some cool challenges. I, you know, I'm always up for a good challenge. I would like to you know at least get prepared for like. Uh, like two weeks out, you know, ment- mentally and physically prepare myself. But I definitely think I could do those uh, ninja challenges that I yeah. see on what you know, uh, USA Zach, Network. Zach Gowan and uh, what did they rename Katanzaro to? Katana Chance. Uh, they, they did once it did American Ninja Warrior. American Ninja Warrior. That's the name. Yeah. That I was calling the Ninja Challenges. Yeah. But like, <laughs> but Z- ninja, when yeah. Zach Gowan did, I mean, like, I remember at that time, like, I wasn't watching the show. My my mom loved that show. Uh-huh. And uh, when I heard it's like, oh, they're going to have Zach Gowan on next week. I'm like, wait, OK, oh. I got to see this. It actually made did me tune get, into theirs. Did he did he get did he get through the uh, the whole challenge? He didn't get through. Um, he he unfortunately and it, it's kind of cruel. It was a challenge like he dropped on one where he really needed leg strength. But oh. he he still I think he was like four obstacles in. He did really well. The crowd was behind him. And okay. I mean, he's been. Obviously, he's been doing very well for himself. He's a motivational speaker now. He's, uh, I think he was wrestling until he had another kid last year. Okay, you know, I think I saw him, I saw him on a show um, maybe like a year or two ago. We were on the same show together. And I, it'd be cool to see. Do, I mean, it'd be cool to see more, you know, um, uh, American Gladiators style shows again. Cause... Yeah, they need to bring that back anyway. American Gladiators. I just saw the documentary on uh, Netflix, and it brought back so much nostalgia. Like, mm-hmm. it, I don't know if it was um, if they showed it. Um, like, it came on like in the '90s. It came on after wrestling. Yes. Did it come on after wrestling? In it the, was. In... Yeah. Oh, even yeah, up here. No, even up here. You had to watch it. <laughs> but and so yeah, it was and... part of my childhood. So yes, I would love to see them bring American Gladiator back. And right now, people want to see celebrities more going against them more than the average Joe. And and that's probably the benefit that wrestlers have on this. You guys have a more expansive variety of skills. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. and when people <laughs> you know, wrestling fans have to deal with this forever. Why do you guys like wrestling? You know, it's fake, right? Like, listen, they have to act, they have to talk, they have to do their own stunts, they have mm-hmm. to be athletic. Fit, we're, yeah, body build. We're finding out some of them can sing. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of, of um, you know, inter, not interchangeable skills, but, you know, they, they can step into a lot of different 
styles of uh, of celebrity now and thrive. Yeah, you know, wrestlers are very uh, well utility players. I guess <laughs> would be the way to go into that. Um, so yeah, Silent Library. You enjoyed yourself. You'd, would you have totally done it again after seeing uh, what the others went through, or have you been like, you know what, I'm good. I got my fill. Um, I'll probably do one more. You do I'd one probably, more. I do. I would love to do a reunion if they would <laughs> throw that idea out there to MTV a reunion at Silent Library. And then like uh, after getting drawn like four times just like why the hell i know that'll be my luck it'll be the opposite like i get all the challenges (laughs) karmic balance my friend (laughs) outside of silent library you've been and outside of wwe um you've been very busy you know you're still active you're still working you're with the nwa you're with house of glory uh but in the last you know decade you've put out uh your autobiography and damn why did i write this book which fantastic title thank you thank and you. then <laughs> uh, and then the sequel damn why did i write this book too there was a, a book you put out i think it was in 2020 that was basically to help people you know diy how to exercise so you got you know yeah. got a fitness routine in uh you put out a mobile app i think it was a, a meme based thing an audio yeah app. audio oh uh, yeah audio app yes you've been busy <laughs> so and and of course you've got the uh the hair product line uh, the hair yes. and body line, rather. I think it's. Yeah, uh, beard, I didn't write it. Body. I, yeah, I didn't write it in my note, but I think it's sexy as hell. If I remember, sexy what it was as called. hell beard care. Yes. <laughs> so, how, I mean, what inspired you to branch out? You know, this much because I mean, these are not businesses that tie together. You typically. Yeah. Um, so, I started my beard journey. I see you has a, you have a wonderful beard yourself. And you know, I feel like it needs work. <laughs> I was making my own products for my own beard. I was getting a lot of compliments. I, you know, and then um, somebody told me that I should sell it. You know, but it didn't have any scent or anything to it. But you know, I got together with somebody who 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 does um, who did um, hair products, and we put our brains together to make it more marketable and then sexy as hell beard care. And then that branched off to um, not from from beard, then it went to skin. Why not have your beard? scent matching with your with your body then it went from body to hair so we just went i just started doing um skin body and hair and then during covid i uh came up with an idea for uh testosterone boosting cmos and then i started uh selling that because my buddy uh, told me that it was it was a great idea you have to have good friends around you to encourage you and then um yeah i got tmos at t-moss.com testosterone boosting cmos nice i didn't know about that one so yeah there's gonna be a whole laundry list of things that that, (laughs) uh, my viewers need to check out you made an appearance back in wwe last year Uh, oh yes of course this was uh, wwe hall of fame uh where they uh they honored shad my viewers should know because i did talk about it Uh Uh, you know he he passed away in 2020 saving his son Mm -hmm. he even even well before that you know the dude was known for being very kind-hearted he had once stopped a robbery at a gas station you know, yes Shad, uh, i was there <laughs> were you there i was there yep it was TMZ right didn't mention show. that yeah it was right after the show at a gas station yeah we, we we pulled in for some uh drinks uh for some uh chips and stuff you know some snacks for the for the room something after to get the through the night yeah yeah, something to get through the night, and then that guy picked the wrong time to rob the bank. <laughs> I mean, to rob the bank, to rob the, the gas rob the station. Gas station. Um, but yeah, I mean, the the dude, you know, again, he was always willing to put others first. I know you had said even to uh, uh, Chris Van Fleet um, when you were going through a rough personal patch. Yeah. You know, he just took you to a beach and uh, <laughs> and did his best, you know, to, to you know help you talk through it, because sometimes yeah. that's really tough that's tough for a normal guy Mm -hmm. um but yeah in in last year he was uh you know the recipient for the warrior award which you know now is finally you know starting to go to the people that i think it was intended to go to um but you know we got to see you back when the award was presented with his family you joined them you know it was just encouraging to see uh both you back and them actually paying respect to someone who had a kind heart in the business because it's very hard to find in this industry yeah <laughs> especially and and it's one of those things where i guess in in the niche of my channel 
you know, the YouTuber, mm-hmm. the wrestling YouTuber, where the internet smart. Um, you know, everything is negative. You know, we the stories we hear, we don't hear stories about people being good typically because uh-huh. the stories are, you know, Hulk Hogan live They're- for the hundred and fifty eighth time. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, there were troubles backstage and these two got into a fight. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, with that said, you know, how do you want to see Shad's legacy carried on? Uh, I think with Shad, um, I want everybody to still remember him as a hero. Um, because uh, I know that, you know, us being on TV, I know that kids, you know, they look at WWE superstars as heroes. And I think he always carried in the back of his mind that, you know, I'm not just going to be a a hero on the screen. I'm going to be a hero also in, in real life. And he, you know, he took that responsibility with him. You know, it wasn't just for his son. He would have did it for anybody. And also in the gas station situation, there was, there's other situations. You know, we've been at the club and this dude was yelling at his, uh, yelling at some chick and at, at the club and Chad stepped in and the guy tried to get, uh, get fresh with Shad and Shad just wind up taking the guy down and waiting for the cops to come. Then there's, there's many more. At least, you know, <laughs> it's like that stories. That should be on a Yelp review. It's a testament to how well the bar is pouring drinks if somebody thinks they can take out a six foot seven <laughs> pro wrestler in the middle he of the club. Him. He tried him, but yeah, there's, there's plenty of stories. But yeah, Shad was a hero uh, on the screen and, 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 um, and behind the scenes as well. Um, are there any any charities, foundations uh, tied to his name, or or you know ones that you recommend uh, people? Yes, see I, I, I definitely do believe there's a um, a Gaspard Foundation. I know that his sister is uh, running it to some of the charities that Shad had. So mm-hmm. I think his, his sister is running sister is running it at the moment. But if he was to go on Shad's uh, Shad's Instagram, it's still I think is it's still running is uh, mm-hmm. the charity should, should be up there. Are there any other upcoming products services uh, that you're promoting here that you're looking to get going? Are you? Oh uh, no, just. Um, I mean, we, we're looking long. for a new Twitter. So if you want to hop on that train, the, the new Twitter. We're looking, oh, and we're looking go, for we a new Twitter. <laughs> Elon's not doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Not yeah, really. I mean, we'll see. I'll, I'll see what, what we could do after the. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, I think uh, I mean that that actually covers all all the questions that I had. I didn't think we'd blast through that. Um, it's all good, man. We gotta do this again. Absolutely. We would have another project because I definitely will have some more projects. So yes, we will definitely have to do this again. Get the word out. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for for you know uh, agreeing to. Uh, chat with me on this. I do appreciate it. Was fun, it. Man. It, was, it was good. Also love to see that you're happy and healthy. That's, you know, the two most important things. If we don't have those, we've got nothing. You're absolutely right. Peace of mind. Yeah, absolutely. A huge thank you again to JTG for taking the time to sit down and chat with me about his career and his experiences in both wrestling and on Silent Library. If you'd like to find his socials, he's JTG1284 on whatever the hell Twitter is calling itself now. With that said, I'd love to ask you, what are your favorite JTG and Crime Time moments, whether in WWE or elsewhere? And if you had the chance for yourself, what questions would you ask him? Be sure to let me know in the comments and subscribe to the channel for more because I want you to be a part of these conversations too. For now though, I better get my shoulders off the mat, so I want to thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. I'll catch you next time.